Welcome everyone to the Lo-Fi poli Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pickering, and that's right. Lo-Fi is in low fidelity, low quality, in your face, messy as can be, global news show. Here we're going to talk about that famous question, what's going on in the world today? We'll be covering five headlines from across the globe and then choose one to go into a more detailed analysis. The news fresh off the press. Source, Reuters, World Section. Drug smugglers hide 1.3 million worth of cocaine in UK face mask consignment. That's right, folks. It may be early in the morning for some of us, but never too early to talk about over a million dollars worth of coca being hidden under face mask. The implications. The article goes on to state how we should be aware, nay, shocked, at criminals trying to take advantage of the current conditions in the world. Well, I say, please. And how about you wake up? Criminals take advantage of every situation and every condition humanly possible. The only surprise about this story is that you're even surprised at all that it's happening. Moving on. Next up, source, the Associated Press, International. Israeli president asked parliament to choose prime minister. This story comes as an update to a story from Monday, discussing a deadlock between opposition parties and coalition building. The two sides did not reach an agreement before the deadline to do so. The implications. The president has given parliament three weeks to select a new prime minister, basically creating a new deadline since the one from Monday and Tuesday was not met. If the opposing sides cannot come to power sharing arrangements, this will trigger a fourth election in over a year, at a time when no one is likely to want to go out and vote en masse. However, we'll see if that's even possible. One of our later stories does exactly this. However, this does not mean just because one country can do it that another country should or can do it themselves. It's Thursday, Lo-Fi listeners, meaning we're bringing you Thursday's feature of Reporters Without Borders, focusing on Belize today. Belize shares western borders and northern borders with Guatemala and Mexico, respectively, and an Easter border with the Caribbean Sea. Let's remember that Reporters Without Borders ranks 180 countries and territories by level of media freedoms in the country, both constitutionally and in practice. And Belize comes in at 53 out of 180, putting the country in the top half of the countries with the freest media in the world. Belize is in between Fiji at 52 and Madagascar at 54. Between 2018 and 2019, Belize has dropped six rankings, however, and let's take a closer look to see exactly why that is. The implications, and to quote RSF, which is Reporters Without Borders, coverage of political developments and criminal cases in Belize is controversial because the media are extremely polarized. This often results in legal proceedings that are long and costly for media outlets. End quote. A sad trend that we are seeing more and more around the world is governments taking aim at media outlets and journalists that are critical of them, and sue them for either defamation or libel. Generally speaking, those journalists are suspended, sometimes without pay, while the judicial proceedings take place. In many cases, the the journalist and media organization do in fact win, depending on the country, but in many developing countries, journalists and media organizations cannot afford the cost of the time without work to provide for their families. Thus, Defamation and liable suits are more and more commonly used across the globe as a form of threat to force media organizations and journalists to self-censor themselves. We'll be keeping an eye on you, Belize. And now for our headline in the spotlight segment. Source, the AP News International. High-level North Korean defector wins South Parliament seat. A few points of clarification to begin with Lo-Fi Nation. This headline is a bit tricky and misleading. Firstly, the usage of the phrase high-level North Korean defector is not an accurate description, depending on your perspective. The individual is a former minister to the UK Embassy for North Korea. That sounds nice and fancy. However, in realistic terms, it means very little. Embassies, for a country that has no relations with most of the world outside of China and Russia, these ministers don't actually do anything much. What's more, it's believed that in many cases these are simply individuals that the government wants out of the country but does not want to take the political cost of killing them. Therefore, being sent to an embassy in a country where you do almost nothing is a form of banishment or exile from North Korea. Though, to give AP News credit, their headline does sound a lot better than all of that. Oh, and in the headline when they say South Parliament, they are talking about South Korea. The implications of this story. A North Korean defector becomes the first ever to win a seat in Parliament in elections in South Korea? This is amazing news indeed. Both countries do not actually call themselves North and South. This is very much an outsider's perspective. South Korea's full name and real name is the Republic of Korea. 
and North Korea's full and real name is the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. In both countries' constitutions, they claim the entire geographic area that both countries inhabit. They do not see legitimate separation of the two countries. As such, it's amazing to see South Korean government and people embracing this by allowing and electing a North Korean defector to run and win a seat in the country's parliament. Impressive, South Korea. Impressive. And a side note. If you listened closely to the name of North Korea, you will have noticed that the word democracy was in the title, and yet they are one of the most authoritarian regimes in the world. We will cover this issue, just not today, Lo-Fi Nation. And a last piece of news from the BBC, Africa. Lions take over tourist tracks. You heard me right, Lo-Fi Nation. In the Kruger National Park in the country of South Africa, where tourist roads have become vacant, Lions have started sunbathing on the road and taking naps. The lions in the pictures are, in one word, adorable. The implications. This headline says, Lions take over tourist tracks. We here at Lo-Fi say those lions are taking back their turf. We all know those lions were there long before the roads. So we here at Lo-Fi poli unequivocally, unabashedly, unanimously, do endorse and support these lions taking it back, all Lo-Fi-like. And that's a brief snapshot of what's going on in the world today. Please write in with your questions, comments, or requests of countries for our new segments to lofi poli sci at planetmail.com. That's lofi, L-O-F-I, poli, P-O-L-I, sci, S-C-I, at planetmail.com. Let me say thank you so much for listening. Stay safe, wash those hands, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Lo-Fi Poli Sci Podcast. Pickering, signing off. <laughs>